Hi, my name is Thais Gibson, and I'm the creator of the Personal Development School. This is your daily breakthrough video, and in this video, I want to talk to you a little bit about the fearful avoidant is thinking when they are in the process of deactivating. And I'm going to take you through six key patterns that I tend to see with fearful avoidance in my practice over the years and through many, many conversations I've had with fearful avoidance you know, in my practice and also in the school currently. Now, um, I want you guys to keep in mind if you hear this and if you are on the receiving end of this, so you have a fearful avoidant loved one who is deactivating, please keep in mind that this isn't necessarily how the fearful avoidant actually feels about the relationship. What's usually happening when somebody's deactivating is it's like all of their unresolved traumas and wounds that are related to whatever the context of is, is of a specific situation they're deactivating over. So for example, if they're deactivating over feeling unseen and they have this like history of feeling unseen in childhood in a way that was painful and made them, you know, feel unimportant and, and, you know, things like that, whatever's unresolved, you can think of an external stimulus or, or experience being something that catalyzes the subconscious mind stored memories and all memory is colored with emotion. So what essentially happens is like this external situation is igniting all of these stored feelings. And so the fearful avoidance is feeling the pain and suffering from the situation that's currently taking place, as well as all the stored pain and suffering that's now being brought up. It's like the subconscious mind opens its filing cabinet and is like, oh, feeling unseen, this is what it is. And all that emotion floods to the surface. So if you're hearing this and you are the loved one of a fearful avoidant, this isn't necessarily how they feel about you as a whole. This is some of the stuff that often comes up for them irrespective of what type, what romantic relationship they're in. It's not like just with your relationship. It's probably pretty consistent in their history of ro romantic relationships. If they were always FA or if they become, became fearful avoidant after a really challenging adult romantic relationship and that sort of shifted their attachment style. Um, but this isn't necessarily at all a picture of how they feel about the relationship as a whole. Now, as a fearful avoidant becomes more secure, these painful, painful thought patterns um, and ways of feeling and being and the intensity of how much a fearful avoidant tends to deactivate will start um, becoming less and less. And it will also help happen less often, like further apart. So the frequency and intensity start to calm down. Um, so anyways, without further ado, giving you context for that ahead of time, um, these are some of the patterns I'm, I've observed the most, okay? So pattern number one is I don't want to be with this person any longer. I can't do it. I'm done. I'm out of here. Now, what I really believe this to be is a trauma response that's the flight response. Um, and what I've, often, what I've often found is the fearful avoidant tends to have exaggerated um, trauma responses, which are fight, flight, freeze, and fawn responses. And um, it's really common for the fearful avoidant to have a really strong flight response when they're feeling helpless in a situation to get their needs met, to get resolution for something. And so I believe that our thought patterns um, are, are sort of circulating from like a lot of activated emotion, which produces a lot of actions, which is, can then sort of circle back to trigger more thoughts, right? Thoughts tend to create emotional responses, which then create actions, which then create more thinking, which then create more emotions. And it sort of goes around and around. So we'll hear a lot of these, like, I don't want to be with you. I'm done. I'm out of here. I can't do this anymore. Like a lot of these types of thoughts that the fearful one will say at worst, um, um, but may also just be thinking and feeling and emoting according to. Number two, again, this sort of goes hand in hand with a uh, flight response, um, but also like trying to take power back when they're feeling very helpless. Things like I chose wrong, I'm not compatible, I shouldn't be with this person, it's not gonna work long-term and really like extending out that flight response into the future and sort of justifying all these different reasons. This is also a subconscious strategy to create safety. It's like, if I can justify all the reasons that this is the wrong relationship, this isn't for me, then I create distance and then I don't have to feel like you have power to continue to continue to affect the way that I feel, which is something that fearful women tend to really feel triggered by in the moment themselves. Pattern number three goes in a different direction. And this is, this person doesn't care about me anyways. A lot of the like, look, they don't even care. They're not even trying to make it better. If they cared, they would do something. They're not doing anything. And sometimes there's like a sense of impatience around it for a fearful avoidant as well. Um, and when they don't see action, they don't see somebody understanding how they're feeling or validating their emotions. They tend to start going down this like rabbit hole of storytelling. Like you don't care about me. This person doesn't care about me anyways. They don't even care if we break up, um, which brings us to pattern number four, which can then be 
um, the pattern and it sounds like not so healthy. And it, I mean, it's obviously not a very healthy pattern, but it could just comes from trauma. Um, but sometimes it's this spitefulness. It's like, I'll show them. I don't need them anyways. I'm going to walk away. I'm going to show them. They won't take me for granted any longer. They'll see what they're you know, missing. They'll miss that I've tried so hard in this relationship and put everything in. And then they take me for granted. Well, fine. I'm going to let them know not to take me for granted again. And I've often said on this channel in, in other videos, like spiteful, this is a subconscious strategy for emotional connection. When we feel like we don't have a better way, because it's like, if I'm in so much pain and then I can make you feel pain, like I'm feeling, maybe then you'll understand me. It's like why we give people a taste of our own medicine, quote unquote, like it's because we're trying to get people to understand how we feel. And when we have really poor ways of doing this and we don't have a lot of emotional literacy, we don't know our feelings, we don't know our needs. The subconscious mind is a needs meeting machine. It's going to find a way like that. And so often I'll see this dynamic of thought come up um, when the fearful avoidance really deactivating. And it's because it's just their way of trying to like get seen, heard, understood in some form, not feel taken for granted, feel like they're cared about. Um, and again, not, not the healthiest way, um, but important to recognize some of these patterns as they're happening. Before I go into the next couple here as well, if you guys want to do a deep dive, if you are the fearful avoidant and you're struggling, you're on the rocks with your partner, you find yourself deactivating often, um, or if you're the partner of a fearful avoidant and you want to like work through this as a unit, you can check out our courses for free for seven days um, by clicking the link in the description box below. It'll give you access to all of the courses in PDS. And when you go in, you can go into the webinar library and you can type in fearful avoidant and dismissive avoidant, anxious, preoccupied, you know, all the different attachment styles. And you can actually see all of the dynamics of like what the pain points will be in those relationships together. Um, the steps you'll need to take to work through these pain points. You'll see all the different things, the communication points, the needs, the love languages, um, the reprogramming needing to be done, the types of conversations needing to be had based on what your attachment style is and the other person in the relationship. And it's a really, really powerful guide to help you move through challenging times and relationships as a whole. Um, so anyways, that's in the link below. Um, the next big one tends to be a huge pattern is the, I can't trust them. They don't love me. They don't respect me. Um, it tends to be, I can't trust them. That's really high. And it may not be because somebody actively violated trust. It may not be like somebody lied or cheated or something like that. But a lot of times fearful avoidance have this dynamic of like, I can't trust them because they don't show up. I can't trust them because they take advantage of me because they expect so much from me because they, you know, these sorts of things. And this is where you'll hear these like fearful avoidant thoughts coming in really strongly. Um, and again, it's like, it's that specifically is less so a fight, flight, freeze response or fawn response. Um, but a lot more so in my opinion, um, the core wounds coming up, right? Those core wounds of believing I can't trust anyways and sort of validating that and being like, see, I know now that I'm paying attention, I won't repeat trusting somebody again and having to feel like this again. So again, a strategy for self-protection, but you know, from an emotional perspective and from a relationship perspective and having a secure bond, it like really moves you in the opposite direction back towards the problem rather than towards the solution. And number six, I hear a lot of these dynamics in thinking about, um, I shouldn't be in a relationship anyways. Um, and, you know, sometimes we'll see like the phantom X here come up a little bit, just like it can for a dismissive avoidant where it's like, oh, look, this person is better suited for me or that person, or, um, I should just be single. I shouldn't need anybody. Relationships are too hard for me. Um, you know, and, and nobody will ever meet my needs anyways, like these sorts of justifications. And again, these are also all or nothing thinking patterns, right? These cognitive distortions that come as a result of trauma also, um, and the way it affects the subconscious mind. So you'll see a lot of these like extreme, like all or nothing thinking patterns, not like like, oh, I can work this out. Let me have a conversation. Let me figure out what I need. How will I work this out? We're not moving towards a solution when we're in this trigger traumatized state. We're in like that, like deep, intense, like I shouldn't be here in a relationship. Like this is not working for me. I don't belong in this. Like it's like, <laughs> rather than like the gray area, how do I work it out? What do I do? It's like, it's not working relationships over. I should be single. And so there can be these really polarized patterns of thought. And again, what we know is that there is a relationship between trauma and stronger all or nothing thinking patterns, more extremes. So what we'll often see as a result of this is like, Hey, we can have these really big pain points coming out and we can really get into a position where we have these types of thoughts and we have the emotions that follow them. And then we take actions that follow those as well as neuroscience has proven to us. Our, our um, actions are based on our emotional state. So anyways, I hope this all makes a lot of sense. Thank you so much for watching. 
Thank you for being here. Let me know if you have any other questions about this dynamic in the comments below. Um, let me know your all or nothing thinking patterns or your major thoughts that you have when you find yourself deactivating. Um, and please like, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.